Hi everyone, this is Kathy Grosskirk with Bookkeeping Clean and Simple here in Austell, Georgia in your metro Atlanta. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about some important considerations when you're adding team members in your QuickBooks Online Accountant Portal. I noticed this when I had someone try to add me into their QuickBooks Online Accountant Portal as a team member to give me access to their books. So I'm going to actually break this down into two steps. The first step is that I want to make sure that when we look at inviting someone that we do a couple of things. Now I've already took the process in inviting this particular test user setup person here. As you can see, I have them indicated as invited because we haven't responded to the invitation yet. But if you click on the edit button here, that will take you over into the user setup. And of course you would fill out the name, the email and all of that. And then if you want them to have access to firm administration and books, this is real important. Instead of having everything under custom, you're going to want to grant full access. So that's one thing that we messed up. So we're, it says view only. The, I can't show you from here, but you have to have everything under full access. This also gives you access to their subscriptions and billing, but then you won't be able to look at the chart of accounts. You won't be able to view the reports that you need to view if you're actually doing a file checkup on a firm's books, which is what I was doing with a, another person who has QBOA access and using her books. So that's what's very important. The other thing is if you want to give them client access, then you would actually go in here and check everything in here, or you can just assign in, you know, individually these each different ones. So for, for now, I'm just going to leave it like that. And if we go back to where it says cancel here, that takes us back to the main screen. But let me also show you what happens on the other end when you're looking at it from the standpoint of receiving the invitation. Okay, so we're in the email of the invitee and if everything is done appropriately and correctly, then they should receive an invitation showing that they are invited to join that team. So if you click on that link, this is where you would actually accept the invitation. So once you accept that invitation, which we're not going to do here, then what shows up on the other end shows up as them being active. Until they accept that invitation, it's going to show up as that they're invited and it's just going to hang there. So um, that's real important to understand. And so let's go back to the other list and I'll talk about a couple of other things that, that you need to understand as well. In order for this to work okay so we're back in the team page and like i said we're still showing this as being invited because we didn't respond to the invitation but it's real important to understand that when you actually are going through the process to add the user and i'm not going to actually go through all of this but it's real important to understand that when you're putting the email in here it's probably a best practice to go ahead and copy and paste the email from an email that you may have received from someone that actually works because what happened when this person tried to invite me initially to her team is that she had typed the email address incorrectly so I never received the invitation so if this is done correctly you're going to make sure that that email is correct because if you try to go back in there and correct it after the fact then it, it it's just gonna hang out in limbo and it's not going to do anything. So what we ended up figuring out is that you had to actually go in there and edit the incorrect entry and show it as being invalid entry, invalid entry. So that way it wouldn't conflict with the new request that went in. So it's best to start off with the correct email address. And even if you have to copy and paste it in here, to make sure it's correct. And then you would just go in here and do the firm administrations books and everything like that. 
to, and make sure that you grant them full access. Let's see if it'll let us go to the next page without doing anything. No, you have to put all that stuff in there. But again, you want to make sure that if you're providing them with full access, that means they're going to have to have access to the subscription and billing the way it's set up. Now, I find that, that that's problematic, and that's because I think that there should be a little bit more granular things So I, in, in, in the settings for that. So um, I'm going to submit my feedback to into it to let them know that I think that that's kind of flawed. But um, and I hope that some of y'all will, too, if you find that to be problematic as well. I think you should. But anyway, that's basically all I have for y'all today. So hopefully this had some uh, things that uh, helped you. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And, you know, I'll try my best to answer them as best as I can. Otherwise, I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Y'all take care and we will see you soon. Thank you for watching. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and share it with others. My goal is to publish at least one new video per week on QuickBooks desktop or online topics, the occasional motivational video, and a few surprises thrown in here and there. I would love to talk to you about how to help you optimize your knowledge and usage of QuickBooks desktop or online. My Calendly link is in the slide. Please use that to reach out to me to schedule a free 45-minute initial consult. I would love to talk to you about your QuickBooks desktop or online training needs. Again, have a wonderful day, and until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care.